All right, so today's video, we're watching a Plat 1 Ana on PC. Now, uh, to start off here, they say that they're normally a Mercy player, but they were forced to play Ana, uh, but think they played just fine. Now, I think they had gone Ana because the other teammate was on Mercy, so they say they can't believe how they lost this game, so I already know they lost the game. Uh, since, th since everything seemed to go well up to that point, they're convinced that their DPS were lacking compared to the enemy team and wants to know what they think went wrong here. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I'm looking at the scoreboard right now. The scoreboard seems pretty even. Um, outside, there's a couple extra deaths on the, on the, on, on the DPS on, on their team. So we'll see why they were losing this game. Let's find out. All right, here we go. This is plat one on PC. HD Panda, they see 11 months to finish mine. Good nade. Good sleep. So far, so good. Good on a grenade. Okay. I mean, so far, so good. I mean, obviously, like, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I so far, so good. Uh, the only thing I could say is your position needs a little bit of work on the beginning, where you stood in the middle, like right now, like. But like your teammates are kind of also out of position. Uh oh, yeah. I, I just one thing you just did there, by the way, and and I. I want you to be kind of careful of this. You, I like that you're going for DPS, but you have two teammates who are really, really, really low in front of you. You need to give your teammates opportunity there, and you're not. You're, you're, you're Junkrat, and you're worried about your DPS. I know your Junkrat's not playing the best position, like why they're playing next to the Sigma, but at the same time, you have opportunity to keep your Junkrat alive there, and you just decided to go for a shot on the win. So, or like maybe the Bastion, whoever it was. Uh, point being is, is like, get your teammates up a little bit more there, especially to a point where they're not just going to get rolled. Um, and then, you know, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're I, I will say your Junkrat's position, it wasn't the best either, so. Positioning, by the way. Yeah. This is what I kind of talk about, and, and this is where I said, like, one of my concerns is, like, mechanically, you seem to actually be playing this very well, but your positioning is just really off. So, like... You can argue that it's your teammate's position and that makes that happen, but it's also to the point where, like, as Ana, you need to find a sight line that works for you and then commit to that sight line. If your teammates get out of LOS and they get mad, that's a little bit different, but, like, you're not even giving yourself a sight line. You're just sitting in the middle of the open and that's going to be a free pick. I want you to think about it from this point of view. Let's say that you're, you're, you said that you play a lot of Mercy, right? Let's say that you're, you're damage boosting your DPS and you see an Ana in your positioning. The call out from you and your DPS is, wow, this Ana is out of position. Let's get this Ana, right? Now, this is a two-step process in the sense that, like, your teammates also need to be in your LOS, but that's a problem they're going to have to deal with at a certain point, right? Whether that's for you telling them, hey, like, I need you to be in the LOS, look where I'm standing, etc. But yeah, if you find yourself having to do this, this is how you're going to fall over uh, immediately. Um, because your position just isn't good. Most of your teammates disengage the other way. So say you were playing, say you were playing back here in, like, a, like a kind of like a regular LOS type of situation you would have been able to rotate back and save your team, right? Because your teammates all ended up back here. Instead, you just gravitated here and got rolled. You know what I'm saying? So even though your teammates had not good positioning, you had the worst of the positioning. See? Hello there. Got a tire. Nice sleep, by the way. That was well well done. All right. Good on a grenade. Don't be afraid of Nano. Look, by the way, look what you're doing. I know you're heading towards a point, but I want you to be careful of running in a straight line down there. They're probably going to be able to win that team fight, but once again, be careful. All right, you're fine now. Now, now you want to use the cover. One of the one of the cool things about Rialto is this statue area can be good cover until they get map control. So, like, find opportunity here. Find a spot that will work for you. Right? Don't don't just sit there and like go in and try to. You can make this work. Let me go back up a little bit. Focus on positioning. Uh, yeah, by the way, I love that you slept the Winston there. Yeah, you just got rolled right there. I love that you slept the Winston because there was absolutely zero chance you were trying to sleep that Winston. I want to point that out. There was zero chance that's who you were going for. I, I think they're playing very well. Like I don't, I don't I, like from like, a mechanical point of view. I think I would have had the same reaction you did. Um, 
From a mechanical point of view, they're playing very well. From a position point of view, definitely need some work. Like right now, by the way, look where you're at. You haven't rotated because you wanted to sit there and stare at your mercy. Good luck now. Yeah. You got out, but like, do you see what I mean? The things that you can definitely clean up with your gameplay. Um, although I probably would have done the same thing when watching the Mercy Falc to go across there to do nothing. Hi, Debito. Thanks for the 14 months. Let me just try Thank you. So I get that. Here you go. Teammate, teammate, teammate. New team. All right, plat one. Good sleep again. Sleep's been great. And very accurate, which has been cool to see. Nice pick. Nice nade. Nice sleep again. Yeah, your sleep's a bit super accurate. That that is something that definitely look at. Okay. I'm gonna pause for a second. Okay, now that we've settled a little bit, all right? Let's talk about this for a second. Now that you've settled for a little bit, I want you to start thinking about good positioning, all right? So we're gonna go up here into the skybox for a second. As of right now, your team doesn't have map control, right? So you're gonna end up in a good spot. These angles right here will be good spots for you. You have plenty of cover. If your team moves up, you'll have natural cover up here. These are the spots you'll gravitate towards. If you start standing in the middle of the open, you're going to get rolled. And a lot of the time, you, you want to focus on like blaming DPS at that point. But until you give yourself good position and consistently, it's really hard to be like, oh, I can't believe they were doing this. Because right now, you technically have been a free pick twice because of your position. So let's eliminate that part of it, and then you go to the next step. We'll see what you do. We'll see what you do. I'm, I'm giving it time. LOS is line of sight. So, like, behind a wall. A simple way to explain that is this. Like, I'll pause it at a good moment. All right, one second. Okay. Right, I'm just going to show you an example. You ready? See the, see the ash here? They can't see the Ana. See the Ana? The Ana can't see the Ash. They are out of line of sight, right? So when we say creating good line of sights for your teammates, that means like you're playing an area. So if you play here and you have, you have cover right here, your teammates are in line of sight. And then if you need to get out of line of sight of the other team, you can hide by using cover. Do you see? Do you hear LOS a lot? But that's what we're referencing. Positioning, you have you have cover right there. This is this is cover. This is positioning. Don't well, no no no. Okay, I, I it worked. I, I'll give you that. I might have done the same thing, so I'll give you that one. Yeah. No, I might have done the same thing. I'll, I'll give him that one. Good sleep. Okay, you got a gold. Work on your positioning. Work on. What you're doing? Oh, I will say, the sleeps have been great. Really good sleeps, by the way. Good job by your life weaver. Watch it. Okay, good job by your team. All right, focus on good positioning, please. Nope, okay, perfect, wonderful. Basically, I wanna get you in a good habit of good positioning, like you survive that and it's fine, but just don't do that because there's a chance you do that, you get shot by like a, their, what do they have on their team? They're bashing, they're ash dynamite you and you fall over. Right, you're at the ash rolls you when you jump down out of a good spot. You get what I'm saying? So you don't have to make that play, and you can still do the same thing. I'm okay with you pushing up a little bit here. You have you have angles. You do see the um Moira. Okay, back away, back away. Don't be afraid to nano your Bastion on their next turret form or your Sigma. I'd say those are probably your two targets right now. That's fine. I'm okay with this. A little bit early of a. 
You know what though? You know what those like type of nanos like remind me of though? Like you ever play and then you get nano like that? Those remind me of like the surprise. And you're like, as a as a Sigma player, you're like, uh, what? Uh. So sometimes you want to try to time your nanos like a little bit better. You get what I'm saying? Like give like think about the opportunity your teammate has. If your teammate's not gonna fall over, give them a bit more opportunity. Because like then 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 your Sigma almost felt forced to go in there and make a play. Bastion, Bastion. Your life weaver saved him, but you're Bastion. You're leaving a couple of your teammates at low HP. Sigma's a little bit out. It's just, I, I want you to be careful of what you're doing right now. Yes, yeah, very decisive about nanos. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm more like, sometimes when players are like, hey, what can we do better? And like, what can we do here and there, et cetera? I, I'm more kind of going along the lines of trying to like help clean up a little bit of the gameplay. Because when they aren't having like major mistakes that they're doing during the game, I, you still want to clean up some of the, like the, like for example, when I was doing the, the scrims, like it wasn't like I was just running in and feed and it was just like, oh yeah, by the way, we're taking a little bit too much poke damage. Well, that's like a, like a, 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 a small part of what's happening in the game. I now understand that something simple as that can help fix my gameplay by a ton. You get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So for me, it's definitely worth being able to kind of analyze it that way and look at it that way. So, yeah. Okay, here we go. But yeah, if, if your tank is out of position like that, sometimes you just need to let your tank be out of position. Um, but at the same time, people have heard me say, like, go with the pace of your teammates. I, I would say it's good to go with the pace of your teammates, but find a good way to go about it. You get what I'm saying? Is that, is that helpful? What in... Okay. I just saw a diva chasing that soldier. Don't don't peek, don't peek. Back away, back away, back away, back. You're in overtime. Overtime spawns, overtime spawns. I want to get this in the mindset of players. Overtime spawns are longer spawns. You don't need to feed here. Just just play smart. Back away, back away, back away. You can go behind. No, be careful. In the middle, right there. Yes, right here. Good. Now wait. Ready and peek. Don't over peek it. On a grenade. You have a timing. Perfect on a grenade. Nice sleep. Nice nade. Wonderful. Good job. Do you see why I was like really stressing the idea of like trying to get to a good position right there? It's like super important you do that. All right? The soldier did live that too. I want to point out that soldier who made that journey survived that whole time. I just needed to see where that journey was going, and it worked out. Yeah, mechanically, the Ana's been playing great. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, like, been playing great. If I'm, I'm going to be real with you at this point. So, you like the make and one-shot all heroes idea? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. That would really step up Overwatch. I agree. This, this is what I would consider, like, okay positioning, as in, like, this isn't bad. Like, you're taking high ground, you have cover if you need it, as you can see when the Torb shoot. Now, you so, like, this is kind of what I mean when you focus on that. I, you know, eventually you're going to drop down because you're going to realize no one's pushing the cart. Okay, your Mercy did. Like, this is good, though. This is what I mean. Like, you're, see how you're there in sight line and how, like, you want to focus on this? Like, imagine playing, like, this type of position most of the time, where, like, it's harder for the team to get value on you and you're not spending the whole time trying to run around like you're playing, like, you know, what do people reference like Dead by Daylight, right? Like you can kind of just chill here and do whatever you want to do. And this is cool. You can create these type of sight lines on most maps as Ana. Uh, the Big Nasty, thanks for the four months of the Fetish Prime. Thank you, appreciate it. Dude, that tank must hate you, by the way. I want to point that out. That tank must absolutely hate you. Like, I think you're approaching like probably 15 sleeps on that tank this game. I, I wonder if we could, like, count how many times that tank has actually been slept. <laughs> I'm telling you.
All right, there you go. Using cover to get away. You can nano this if you need to. Don't, don't like, sit there and, like... There's going to be this, like, argument back and forth, and I, I want to talk about it for a second, because there's going to be this argument back and forth where people are like, hey, why don't we... The argument's going to be like, hey, why don't you save nano for Genji? And sometimes, like, I'm going to be real with you, with how quickly you can build nano, sometimes Genji's just... And it's not going to be because the Genji's bad. It's just going to be sometimes there's just games where a Genji takes a bit to be able to build up their stuff, right? You get what I'm saying? Like, sometimes it can just take a little bit for a Genji to be able to build Blade, and you can, like, you can two to one them on Nanos. So, like, don't be afraid to, like, be able to, like, Nano your, like, your Sigma or Nano somebody um, rather than just waiting on Nano Blade. That would have slept the Arisa if they weren't gold. Hey, okay, good. You did that. I, you know, the funny part is, is you were almost at the point where I would have said save it for Blade, but you actually still use it, and I'm okay with you being proactive with that. So, it's good to see that you did use it. Um... Now, now it's going to be a hindsight where you're like, oh, we didn't win that. I tried. I did this. I did that. And now it's going to be a bit of a hindsight. But, like, I'm still okay with proactive nanos. And it's funny because your Genji did build blades. Now your Genji is going to have a bad blade. And then it's going to be one of those things where you and your Genji can't line up. So then the discussion becomes, well, maybe you should wait on the nano blade. Then it's like at the same time, like, then you're just waiting on one specific play to try to win the game for you the whole time. So it's like, do you wait? Do you not wait? That was bad position by you because you were at the corner there. You were going to be fine. Then you went to the corner. So remember that too. Okay, let's watch this. Here we go. Not bad. Nice job on the Torb turret. I'm still watching. You're close to Nano again. Save Nano for Blade now. Definitely save Nano for Blade now. You're going to need this. That Bob won't get any value if you don't give the Bob value. Okay, you're going to have Nano Blade. After this team fight, you have Nano Blade. This is it. This is like your all in play. Feel like you miss all of your shots as Ana out of scope? I have a question for you. Okay, so we'll stop for a second. Did you miss all? You feel like you miss all your shots out of scope? Do you know the difference between the, the Ana shots? Out of curiosity, because there's there's a difference. So when you scope in, okay, so you ready? When you scope in, it's hit scan. Hit scan is wherever your aim goes. That's where your aim's going. And I'm just letting everybody know this one on that one random. The the um when you're unscoped. It is projectile, which means you have to lead your shots. Now, somebody goes, well, what is the difference? Why would you want to, oh, why not just scope in the whole time? One, it's a lot easier to, to, to get a scoped in Ana. Two, when you are projectile aiming, okay, which is when you're unscoped, they can't see the, the, the tracer. So what I mean by that is when you shoot his Ana scoped in, they can see where you're at, right? But let's say that you want to hide in a corner and you just sit there and you don't scope in. They won't see where you're at. You could just sit there and shoot the whole time. They might hear the shots of the Yana, but they can't see where you're at because your, your shots aren't showing on the screen. But when you're scoped in, your shots show. Yeah, like the sniper trail. So like, that's why it's a little bit different. So when you're, when you're, when you're playing Ana unscoped, you need to just recognize it's going to be a bit of projectile. It's going to be projectile. You know what I'm saying? So that's why your, your aiming might be a little bit more difficult when you do that. Anyway, here we go. Yes, technically your shots will be invisible when you don't when you don't scope it. You just need to be able to lead your shots a bit more. It's not like an aggressive projectile, like if you're playing Genji, like it's it's But yeah. Good nano blade. Good job. Try to get one heal in your Genji. Usually one heal in your Genji is probably good enough during that, like to know if they're gonna get the blade or not. I love that you managed to uh, once again um, sleep a tank. Heal your Genji. Be careful of over pushing this. Your mercy is there. Try to heal up your mercy if you can. Nice heal. Genji was gonna get rolled there anyway. I'm gonna be honest with you, you played a pretty good Ana so far. Obviously, there's been a couple mistakes here and there, but like, been pretty good. That's why we're mentioning any things you can clean up a little bit, so. Nice sleep. Careful of positioning. Try to gravitate a little bit left side because the cart also is going to cover you and then play left-hand corner. This is okay for now. Your angle's okay, but remember, this is an easy shot. 
Go down a grenade, save your teammate, and purple's a tank. Well played. Remember positioning so far? Yeah, you know. This is going to be an interesting moment because we talk about this sometimes where, like, we get people to, like, submit stuff and say that, like, oh, my, you know, this player isn't doing that, that player isn't doing this, etc. But honestly, if I'm going to be real with you, this has been a situation where, like, it's not like your DPS playing bad. It's the timing of the picks by your DPS that's been tough for you. And a lot of that has to do with, like, your, your team comp is more inconsistent. So when their team is running, like, Torb and, and, and Ash, there's more consistency to their damage, right? They're going to do more damage. When, they're, when you're playing Genji and Junkrat, it's a little bit more inconsistent. So, like, there's going to be moments of, like, what, like, like downtime where nothing happens, right? So, like, that's probably, like, another reason why you're getting that feeling of, like, what are my DPS doing? It's not, it's not even necessarily they're, like, playing, like, inherently bad. It's just, like, it's such a, like, an inconsistent, like, it almost relies on a couple of things to happen for them to get that value. You know what I mean? So they had the very they had very similar amount of a limbs, but it's the timing of those a limbs that have been the issue. Does that make sense? You do have a um what's it called now? You do have a um a solar 76, so you can at least have a bit more consistency there. Oh no, they didn't wait on you. Uh hopefully it's a good blade. Okay, it was a good blade, it was fine. Ended up being a good blade. Now you have a free nano. My nano suggestion is Ramatra, but I want to see you save it for third. Position in there, by the way. That that was an example of what I was trying to like uh, point out to you, where like your positioning can get you killed. You almost just got one shot. Now you go, well, I didn't get one shot, so it's fine. Yeah, but let me just give you the next step with this. What happens, right? What happens if you decide to, you get one shot there, okay, my Mercy can res you, your Mercy reses you. Now someone else gets picked off. Now your Mercy can't res. Now it's a 4v5. See what I'm saying? Got to be careful with that. Stay consistent with the positioning. Nano Ramatra. Good Nano. You'll be fine there. A little bit over by your team, but like, I'm in the assumption that if you win a team fight, you'll be able to at least have one more alt stack to try to win the game. And I agree, the Genji did win that team fight. That's why I'm saying like, I don't think it's necessarily the DPS are playing inherently awful. It's just like when you're playing in a Genji Junkrat comp, the amount of times you get a limbs is a little bit more con like inconsistent, right? And you can see that. So your 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 playmaking by your team is going to happen in bursts, while the while the playmaking of their team is going to kind of happen in like almost a consistent like style. So sometimes we're playing against that consistent style where it's a little bit more hit scan, a little bit more like. You're not relying on some like random like double mine play from a junk rat or like a a really good like dash reset by a Genji. You're gonna have moments of like nothing happens. So you have that feeling of like what's going on, but like if you can kind of like figure out how to time the team comp, whether that's communicate with your Genji here, I'm gonna build well, you know but stay back and farm blade up a little bit more, etc. Like then it becomes a little bit easier to figure out why your team comp's happen in that way. So. Yes, you can't you can't sleep Arissa Alter and Alphabet because it's like Arissa Gold. You can can you hack Arissa out of, out of L now? They, they keep changing that stuff. I can't remember. You can? Yeah, I was going to say. So you can hack Arissa out of ultimate, but you can't. Go down a grenade. Your honor grenade's been good. Genji was a little bit out of position there. Nice job. Uh-oh. Run! Run! All right, this comes down to a nano blade. Hey, that's pretty much what's gonna make or break this game. A nano blade. Okay. And I would like to know this, and I don't think they're in here. But did did your Genji say nano them, or did you nano your Genji? Because if you just nano your Genji randomly, that's on you. A thousand percent. There should have been no way that, that Genji was going to be nanoed. So if their Genji asks for nano, that's on the Genji. If you nanoed the Genji randomly, that's on you. Straight up. Straight up. That, that's, that is the way I'm seeing that one. 
But yeah, that, that's gonna come down to if you decided to nano your Genji there randomly, that's on you. If your Genji asked for a nano there randomly, that's on Genji. Because there was no way that was gonna get any value at that point. They were too far back to, for any value. I, you know, the Genji's name is probably perfect for what just happened during that play. Why? Uh, Wiener Poop, thanks for the gift of sub. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Oh yeah, also you're right, the projectile size went on scope too. Good call on that one. Sorry, I just don't know. On a grenade. That's good. Hey, you're Genji. Good heal. Hey, you're a Matra. Matra's gonna die there. Maybe not. No, the sleep missed! It wouldn't have mattered, but yeah. Corey, thank you for the tier one. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks. And there you go. Team kill. Back a little bit. There we go. Okay, so what I will say. What I will say about your Ana is that I thought your mechanics were really good. I thought you, like, you were very accurate with your sleeps. You were very accurate with your shots for the most part. You did a good job of stuff. You had said, like, you feel like your DPS are, like... I, I think this is one of those games where just understanding that your DPS isn't going to be as consistent when it comes to what you're running. Because you're running, you're running, like, double projectile for a while. Obviously, you're on Soldier now. Honestly, and, and this is... I'm going to be real with you. And, and I, I don't know what happened there with that Genji blade, but I think that was the make or break of at least getting past that point and giving yourself an opportunity to win this game. I don't know if it was the Genji asking for nano or if you decided to randomly nano, but that was like the difference maker in this game. So like the point I'm making is while you have the team that's a bit more consistent because they're running the hit scan comp, and then you have the team that's running more of the projectile, it came down to like one last team fight, but it ended up being down to one set of ultimates. So when you look at this game, I wouldn't necessarily say like, oh, like your DPS were playing terrible. Oh, what were they doing? It, it, it can feel that way too, because like I said, it's very inconsistent with like when the picks happen. But when you play this like Nanoblade style of play, Nanoblade can carry fights. And that Nanoblade interaction you had about 30 seconds prior to the end of the game, or like a minute prior to the end of the game, felt like that was probably the make or break in this game. Because the Nanoblades were working, the Genji was popping off during those Nanoblades, your teammates were feeding off of that good gameplay, and then that happened, right? So I, I think like in this game, it really just came down to that one play. Um, but overall, like from a from like a positive point of view, like your your mechanics were good. I think you need to work on your position a little bit. Um, yeah, you could definitely play on a bit more too. So that's my take on that one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to all three YouTubes if you haven't. Uh, also leave a comment, all that helps. Um, if you want to submit your own spectator, look in the description below. That is where my Discord is, and you'll be able to go on there, submit for a bunch of stuff. Um we also record these live on stream. You can see the Twitch chat right below the webcam, so stop by if you haven't. With that being said, hope you have an amazing day slash night.